now that we're in week three, priority is still fitness, so we're still working hard on our, uh, on our fitness levels, but also introducing the ball. Uh, once you introduce the ball, things become far more competitive. Small sided games uh, not only helps their fitness and obviously keeps it competitive, but also helps their skills. So we're trying to combine two or three things um, as we go along. Week four, we'll obviously start bringing the uh, ball in far more frequent than we are. This week is probably three or four times. Next week, obviously five or six, leading into uh, far more team stuff probably in week five, five and six. It's such a multifaceted sport. There are so many areas that different individuals have to be good at. Um, they obviously have to be strong. Um, certain uh, positions have to be fast, um, you know, from acceleration points of view, but also across top speed. Um, so there's a lot of different areas that they have to work on. Um, power, for example, is a is a massive area that we try and improve. Um, but it's different power depending on what position you play in. We took some testing and baseline measures from the guys initially. That gave us a real good idea of where they're at physically across the board from a fitness point of view, from a strength, power, speed point of view. Initially we went into a very general phase, introducing the boys gently into training and gym work. So we get that over that initial soreness of coming back into the gym um, and the muscle damage that creates. Then we've now split looked at all the results from the testing, reviewed those results and we've gone into a very individualised approach and grouped players according to their requirements physically. So some guys will focus a lot more on speed and power, some guys will focus on strength, as other guys you know, requiring to put some muscle mass on so their real focus is on hypertrophy. So we're really trying to give the guys an individual programme and working towards their individualised goals along with other strategies in other areas such as nutrition. Um, where we can really manage, for example, increases in muscle mass. There's a lot of, as I said at the beginning, it's a multifaceted game and there's a lot of aspects that require time to get good at it. So therefore time's limited because there's only so much you can train in a day. So what we're trying to identify is, you know, what people are good at and keep them good at it, but where they could improve, really try and pull that up. If that's going to affect their game and the way that we want them to play in the game, then, you know, we need to pull that up and we need to make that a key area so they can transfer it into their game and really make an impact on the field because that's what we're here for at the end of the day. What we mainly use GPS for is to monitor the distances the boys are covering during a session um, and then to a deeper level we can sort of understand how much of this is high intensity work, how much is just low intensity and uh, it gives us an opportunity in pre-season to top up if we need to around that and uh, what we're doing this season, giving the chance for the boys to see what they're doing as well, which we didn't actually feed back the information last year. Uh, so it creates a little bit of competition between them as well. Uh, in pre-season, uh, more so than in season, we actually look at it real time. So we'll sit at the pitch side, uh, thankfully the weather's good for that. And we'll feed back straight to Di and Dan, uh, how the session's going. So if we're pushing that with limit, then we'll uh, obviously not make a call, but we'll influence the coach to try and shorten the session. Um, or if they haven't hit, some boys haven't hit a certain limit. If we're doing top-ups at the end, those boys will be pulled and mid to do extras. Uh, again, like the, uh, it creates competition. I mean, no one wants to be pulled for extras. So the boys are actually pushing and it creates a better environment overall. It's been the physios and, and us will uh, agree on set distances. Uh, and then we'll keep an eye on it. We can set an alert so the laptop will make noise uh, just as they hit, come towards that limit. So a player who's just coming back, we might set total distance. It's just a two and a half K and uh, we'll give them a shout and then they'll have a check. If the physicians are happy that he's pain free, they'll then update that or they'll pull them accordingly. So it's, it's great use. Uh, we did use it quite a lot at the end of the season. Um, with games to see how it's affected, well, how the difference is between how hard they're working then, how hard they're working in training. And we uh, sort of try to cut very specific times for each drill to be able to do that. Um, so it can be really useful in games uh, just to see, to see how that compares to a training situation really and then how, how best can we mirror that. It's not always to completely match the, the game, it's sometimes to take it to a higher level uh, in terms of getting improvement but it just gives you an idea of what you have to do to get to get an improvement. So how much they're doing, if they're doing a certain amount in the game, you're gonna to have to do more in training in order to get an improvement in that area, be it aerobic fitness or an aerobic.
And obviously it's a very different environment to a commercial gym. Uh, you know, this is how uh, athletes train, this is how professional athletes train, rugby boys, whatever athletes. We get quite a few different ones coming in, from kayakers to shop putters. Uh, main aim was pretty much conditioning session. Uh, like you say, it's just a change of environment for them, you know, to stop them getting bored. Um, yeah, but it was mainly conditioning and a bit of a hard session. Conditioning session for them, um, using some strongman gear, uh, and ski eggs and a bit of, uh, yeah, just a team bonding thing really, and competition. And you could feel feel a great atmosphere actually, a great vibe as soon as they came in, you know, it's good banter happening and uh, yeah, it, they looked a, a good unit actually. Uh, Locker 27 today we've had um, four stations uh, where we were tested on three of them uh, and we had to work to the maximum and when we had a score overall, uh, it's one of the hardest things we've done this season so far. The whole pre-season so far has been pretty brutal. Uh, boys are working hard together. Uh, we're putting the effort in now, storing it away in the bank. So when it comes to season time, we're going to look on to push on. The condition games that we're doing as well, we've only done two sets of it so far, but the second time we did it, uh, the standards were so much higher than the first time. Boys are getting fitter already. Skill set was up there, and we're looking to bring in things now we're looking to use in the season. Uh, basically, we've been doing a bit of a strongman, sort of power challenges, some uh, ski erg, uh, some barbell, uh, different, different exercises on the barbell some sled drags, uh, basically all fitness, all anaerobic based fitness. It's all been like a team challenge, so teams of three going against each other. My team came on out on top, me, Evs and Rory Pittman, so uh, pretty happy about that. And then we had a little uh, forfeit at the end for the team that lost. This year, year pre-season is a bit of a, a long slog, There's, um, well, we've got three months of, of in total of pre-season, including games and stuff. But um, yeah, it's nice to mix it up, get off, get off site for a bit, because Twyford Avenue, it can become a bit repetitive. And, and, and Dan, our head of fitness, he's, he's mixing it up by doing every other weekend we go off site. In the um, attitude shown by all the boys has been fantastic. All the new players have come in. We've got a couple of new new arrivals this week as well. And um, it's been tough, you know. I think it's one of the hardest pre-seasons I've ever done. Um, but that was the whole point. I, knew, I know Di wanted to for the team to go through a bit of pain with each other. Um, it helps just build like that, that sense of team spirit. And um, it's been fantastic. Everyone's bought into it, everyone's putting in hundred percent effort. Everything's been recorded, so all your results are shown. So you know if you're not performing well enough in training. So um, yeah, there's no hiding place and that's, that's what we want to create this year. Um, it's all about the atmosphere, team ethos, and, and it's really come together nicely. This is massive. I mean, pre-season is where all the hard work's done. That's where you build your fitness. The stuff that's going to help you carry through the games from minute one to minute 80. You know, sometimes it goes even longer with injury time and stuff like that. The season is such a long season and, and your body goes through such a lot. You have to put yourself through some pain early on and, and that's what we're doing. And, and it's really paying off so far because every, everyone's in, it, results are improving. The intensity in training is picking up already. And then we've still got another couple of months before the season starts.